Welcome to Storytime from Space, a project of the Global Space Education Foundation. To learn how you can support this exciting project, please visit storytimefromspace.com. Hi, this is Scott Kelly aboard the International Space Station. I'm in the cupola. You might be able to see the Earth in the background. It's a little bright out there bunch of clouds but hopefully the clouds will go away and we'll be able to see the earth soon but this is story time from space and I'm going to read you another book this is from the same author that wrote the last book I read my brother Mark this is Maustronaut goes to Mars he completely bypassed the moon and went right to Mars. That's how, that's how brave he is. Anyway, let's get started. I'm not going to read this so you can see the words in pages two, I hope. So, uh, my brother wrote, To you young explorers, it's one of you, not us, who will walk on Mars one day. And that is a true statement. Because I won't, I don't think. I'm pretty sure I won't. I don't think he will either. Anyway. The Galaxy rocket was just one week away from launching. It would be the first human mission to Mars. Even though Mars was Earth's neighbor, the astronauts would need to travel more than 35 million miles to get there. Earth down there? 250 miles away. 35 million? Much, much further. Earth would be a tiny speck like a star. And Meteor, the Maustronaut, couldn't wait to go. The astronauts had been training for two years for this trip. Meteor watched everything they did. Each day he looked over the astronauts' shoulders as they studied, sat under the table, and listened while they ate and kept a notebook of the flight plan and procedures. See him right there? Meteor was certain that he'd be doing he'd be going to Mars too. He might not be the biggest astronaut, but he had the power of small. He worked hard to stay in shape. He ran with Claudia. He did chin ups with Claire. He lifted weights with Charlotte. Claudia, Claire, and Charlotte. That's my brother's daughters. Claudia and Claire and Charlotte's my daughter. One of them. I also have a Samantha, but I don't think that rhymed with Claudia, Claire, and Charlotte. Anyway, the Maustronaut was ready. But when the names of the crew were called out, Meteor's name wasn't one of them. The Maustronaut was not on the list. NASA must have forgotten about their newest astronaut. There wasn't a chance Meteor was going to miss this exciting trip. He was small. He could hide. He could stow away. Slowly, carefully, he climbed the launch tower. Then when, Na when the NASA security guard wasn't looking, he hid under the commander's seat. He tried to be as quiet as he could, but he was scared. He wasn't scared of the rocket launch. He was scared that he would be caught. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Lift off. Okay. The rocket shook. Meteor was pushed against the floor. He held on tight so he wouldn't slide out from under the seat. There was a lot of vibration, much more than he remembered from his launch on the space shuttle, but not enough to bother Maustronaut. Nine minutes later, they were in space. Meteor loved the feeling of weightlessness. Look, they're sleeping. Their hands are floating like this. Anyway, during the long journey, Meteor stayed hidden. He would only come out for crumbs when the astronauts slept. And as Earth got smaller behind them, the red dot that was Mars grew bigger. After six months, they finally arrived. Meteor had stayed hidden the entire time. 
When no one was looking, Meteor peeked through the window and saw different shades of red and orange. Mars was nothing like Earth, but it was still beautiful in its own way. He also heard the astronauts making plans. Two of them would go down to the surface and explore Mars on foot and with a rover. But there was a problem. Galaxy's commander was talking to Mission Control in Houston. We do that up here every day. I'm surprised you didn't hear them already. One of the landing craft's engines had failed its test and wouldn't work. The remaining engine wasn't strong enough to carry even one astronaut. I bet I know what it could carry, though. There would be no trip to the surface of the red planet. They would need to turn around and return to Earth. But the Mousternaut had an idea. He shot out of his hiding place to surprise the crew. Meteor, where were you hiding? The commander asked. They were happy to see him, but still sad about their failed mission. Then Meteor floated over to the hatch leading to the landing craft. Hmm, it is possible, said the commander. One rocket engine could work for someone small enough. It was decided Meteor the Mousternaut would be the first to set foot on Mars. As he put on his spacesuit, the crew gave him instructions. You need to gather plenty of rock samples, said one. And don't forget to bring back some soil, added another. Last of all, they made a tiny American flag and fastened it to a straw. Meteor tied himself into the seat of the landing craft with some string. It launched from the Galaxy spacecraft and made its way to the surface of Mars. The Martian landscape was unlike anything Meteor had seen before. There were no plants, there was no water that he could see, but most important, there were no cats. There were no cats on Mars. That's pretty funny. But he got right to work gathering the samples. The last thing he did before reboarding the landing craft was to plant the tiny flag he'd be given. Be, he'd been given. See him. A cover of a newspaper. The Mousternaut first on Mars. Anyway, Meteor, you saved the day, the crew cheered him as he returned to the ship. You'll be in newspaper headlines around the world. The Mousternaut felt very proud. And we'll make sure you are on our next mission. Six months later, Galaxy Rocket, six months later, Galaxy Rocket returned to Earth. The astronauts were all welcomed as heroes, but the smallest among them was the biggest hero of all. The hand of Mousternaut goes to Mars. Okay, that was story time from space. Tune in to the next reading of a next exciting book from the International Space Station. I'm Scott Kelly, brother of Mark Kelly, who wrote this book and Mousternaut. Talk to you soon. Thank you for joining us for Storytime from Space. We hope you enjoyed our story today from the International Space Station. We hope you'll join us again soon for another book reading or for one of our science experiments. Until next time, we look forward to reading together again soon.